Welcome to the Midnight List. Tonight we're reviewing the Pagani Huayra. This is the second vehicle produced by Pagani and it was preceded by the Zonda. Uh, the replacement has already been announced, which is the Pagani Utopia, but we don't see that in the game at this point. Hopefully we'll see it coming along soon. The Huayra was released in 2011 and is limited to 100 units. It's got a super rigid and lightweight chassis that's made out of something called carbotanium, which is a composite of titanium and carbon fiber. The, although it's limited to 100 units, they did release a Roadster a few years later, as well as the Huayra BC, which is using something even lighter and stronger than the carbotanium that they're calling carbon triax. In addition to these models, Pagani continually releases custom variants of the Huayra, which is similar to what they did with the predecessor, the Zonda. Horatio Pagani began working with fiberglass in his early 20s and was actually trying to build himself a, a kit race car. Uh, to help fund the project, he made fiberglass camper shells and was selling them. Uh, he eventually got signed in with Lamborghini to make the LM SUV project, which was later canceled. Uh, because of this, his position was canceled as well. He was persistent in trying to get back into Lamborghini and ended up getting an entry level position as a body shop tech before working his way up into higher positions within the company. He was pushing Lamborghini to purchase their own carbon fiber autoclave in order to build carbon fiber parts. This wasn't customary at the time for most auto manufacturers, even within Lamborghini and Ferrari, but he went out on his own and purchased one anyway. From here, he became known for creating parts for companies using this autoclave, and that's where he eventually was able to build the Zonda, which was the first car, and it's why this car has so many different variants with uh, higher technology carbon fibers than what you would see in other projects. The interior of the Huayra is much more elegant than what you see in most supercars with uh, high quality leathers and aluminum finishes and it's almost an art deco interior. The knob that you see at the bottom of the seat is actually the height adjuster and the speedometer is the only one that I've seen that actually increases by going counterclockwise. The side mirrors are meant to resemble a woman's eyes. Let's head over to the expressway to see how it did on its flying lap. The Huayra is a very fast car and is capable of braking 250 miles an hour on the front stretch. It also performs differently in that it has active aero both front and rear and left and right. So you can see here where it starts to have air brakes going into this, this corner, but it'll also kind of react to the car slipping. So it feels a little different and it feels like you may be losing control, but the car has a tendency to correct itself. Fully modded, it's just under 807 performance points. So you'll need to tweak it a little bit in order to run at Spa. And on the five times setup that we use for the Tokyo testing, it's using all of the fuel within the three laps and the front tires had 25% wear whereas the rears had 66. So it's a fast car and it's a fun car to drive but it may be a little bit thirsty to do some of the endurance races. During testing I added on the spoilers that are available in the Gran Turismo stores. The active aero is actually the better option as it lets the car remain slippery on the straights and gives you plenty of downforce through the corners when you really need it. Although it is possible that someone might be able to tune the spoilers to have a better performing vehicle, it just didn't seem like it was worth chasing a time that we were already exceeding with the aerodynamics that come stock on the car. Coming up on the final stretch here. The Huayra ended up with a 1 minute, 
47 seconds, 0.624, which puts it at the top of the list. Leave a comment down below if you think you know who's going to be the next to dethrone the Huayra. Uh, and let me know if you're looking at purchasing it. I actually won one through the gift system, so it was kind of a no-brainer for me. And although I didn't like it the first time I drove it, the performance grew on me after I figured out how the car worked. But I'll have the setup at the end of the video here, so feel free to pause it and copy it down. Thank you, and have a great day.